Hi, so in this series of videos we're going to be looking at this, these things called lasers and we're going to start off by looking at something called the Einstein coefficients. But before we do that, let's look at the transitions that can occur in a two level atom. So let's have level two and level one. So there are three possible different transitions that can occur between these two levels. There's some record absorption, and you've probably heard about this. It's when an atom in level one absorbs a photon. So oops, a photon comes in, it's absorbed, and the atom jumps from level one to level two. So this is absorption. Okay, and then let's say we have an atom in level 2. It can also just randomly jump down to level 1. This is something called spontaneous emission. And when it does so, it emits a photon. But this photon can be in any random direction. And then there's another process which you may not have heard of, and that's called stimulated emission. So in stimulated emission, Basically, it jumps from level 2 to level 1, but it only does so when you have another photon. Well, it might do so by spontaneous emission, but it only does so by stimulated emission when you have this photon here. And and the when it jumps from level 2 to level 1, it too emits a photon. And that photon happens to be identical to this stimulating photon here. So you get an extra photon in this in this quantum state and be, they can be in the same quantum state because photons are bosons uh, we don't I, you don't need a detailed understanding of the cause behind simulated emission you just need to know it happens to understand lasers if you want to learn more um, it's to do with you need to, uh, to do a full treatment of like the quantum theory of light so you need to try, treat light as quant a quantum entity rather than a semi-classical one which is often done okay so how do we quantify these transitions so let's write them down we had absorption Ooh, i'm going to change pen because that was not very good we had absorption we had spontaneous emission and we had stimulated emission well, we quantify them by something called the Einstein coefficients. And we give absorption the Einstein coefficient B12, spontaneous emission the Einstein coefficient A21, and stimulated emission the Einstein coefficient B21. So the first number here is the state it moves the, the atom or electron moves from, and the second number is the one it moves to. The B's here kind of tell you that those are the ones that are to do with an external, you need an external electromagnetic field for. Okay, so let's start with the easiest, and that's spontaneous emission, because you don't need anything external. A21 is simply the probability per unit time that an atom or an electron in level 2 will spontaneously decay to level 1. So let's imagine we have M2 atoms per unit volume. Then the rate of change of M2 must be equal to minus A21 times by N2. So that's the probability that a single atom per unit time will decay times by the total number of atoms. That should be straightforward and that's simple probability. And that's the definition of A21. Okay. So, what about B12 and B21? Well, you might think, okay, we'll just define them exactly the same way. However, we kind of want to keep these as properties of the atom, of the, um, atom rather than of the radiation field. And if we were to define them in the same way we defined A21, then they would actually be properties of both the atom and the radiation field. So we need to be careful about this. Instead, we say that B12 times by rho omega, where rho here is the energy density 
of the EM field or that, that electromagnetic field that the atom's in times by something called the line width times by d omega and in theory we should also integrate over omega so then that is the probability per unit time that an atom in level one will absorb a photon to move to level two and if you want to be like take the integral away then then this describes the probability that it will move from level one to level two by absorbing a photon within a range of mega given by d omega and as such we'll put the integral back in so i'm guessing you know what that is and this here where it basically represents it's basically like a scaling function um it's basically the probability that given that uh, B12 has absorbed an atom that it has a field that it has uh, an angular frequency omega it's basically like tell you how likely a, 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 such an absorption is to occur at a given frequency okay and if we were to write down our equation we had last time but this time let's write it in terms of um, N1, so this is the number of atoms in the lower energy state. This is simply going to be N1 times by B12 times by rho omega, phi omega, d omega. And in theory, this, this, this here, the Einstein coefficient doesn't depend on omega, does not depend on omega, so you can bring it outside the integral. Okay, that's the definition of B12. And, um, B to one is just defined basically exactly the same way, except you do that and you would have to change that to two. So it's defined as the probability per unit time that such, sorry, it's defined such that this here is the probability per unit time, per unit atom, per atom, I guess, that uh, it w an atom in level two will decay by stimulating the mission to level one. Okay, by the way, if you can hear like music or whatever in the background, it's not mine. Um, I think it may be someone outside or whatever. Okay, so they are basically the Einstein coefficients. And it's probably worth noting some things. As I've mentioned, that they do not depend on the radiation field. They are basically constant. I say basically because I have read that it, they, they may depend on vacuum fluctuations. But like in all practical purposes, or like they they they're essentially constant, or for a given radiation field, for like in they're basically independent of radiation field. They're also defined such that the polarization of the radiation field is random. So if you have linearly polarized light and you find these coefficients, well, you can't find these coefficients. You have to find the coefficients in the case where you have. Uh, random polarizations or polarizations in all three directions okay um, and that's so they're the Einstein coefficients and they're fairly important when it comes to lasers so next time I guess I will look at um, how energy changes within the atom uh, and how that can be used to make lasers I guess so thanks for watching and any feedback would be great when I awkwardly work out how I turn this thing off. Okay.